an art movement is a tendency or artistic style that interests and influences a number of artists at the same time. Art movements are usually popular for a certain period of time and often overlap. Art movements are particularly important in modern art. Anybody could do that, couldn't they? Greek mathematician Pythagoras said the circle is the most perfect shape. It has no corners, no beginning or end, and every point of the edge is equidistant from the center. Because of its nature, the circle has become a symbol in many cultures. So in art, can a circle ever be just a circle? By the beginning of the 20th century, photography had freed painters from depicting the world in a natural way, and some artists in Europe had been experimenting with new ways of representation. The Cubist artist tried to show all sides of an object at the same time to better represent its reality. The Expressionist artists began to explore color as a carrier of feeling or spirituality. These artists began to abandon traditional Renaissance perspective, and the space within their canvas started to flatten. As artists moved further and further away from showing the way the world looked in an objective sense, they began to question old assumptions about art making. Soon they began to question why they needed objects in their paintings at all. But if you didn't paint people or things, what was the point of making a painting? Even the visual subjectivity of cubism and expressionism was based on abstracting from an object. What would happen if you got rid of objects altogether? What would be left? This theoretical question began to interest many artists. They began to experiment with making paintings that had no reference to the objective world at all. They wanted to create something truly new. There would be no references to nature, to art history, or to culture. They were looking for an art that would be truly universal. The use of geometric shapes seemed to hold the answer. In France at the time, Many artists were interested in the approach to form taken by Pablo Picasso and Georges Braque. But their use of color was intentionally muted, so they could focus on the form in their paintings. Artists Robert and Sonia de Launay and Frantisek Kupka found the flat space and reconstructed form of the Cubist painters useful, but they wanted to bring the sensations that color provided back into their paintings. Originally, like in the early Cubist paintings, there was some reference to objects in the work of these three artists. But gradually, these references disappeared, and geometric shapes took their place. About the same time, Russia was going through a period of unrest caused by political, economic, and social factors. The Russian people were looking for a new way to organize society to mitigate these problems. Artists felt that should include a new way of approaching art. Artist Kazimir Malevich led a group of painters who began using basic geometric shapes in their paintings. Malevich felt that by using these non-objective shapes, he could express the supremacy of pure artistic feeling. These artists wanted to reduce art to its most fundamental components. Their paintings used pure color, and they were concerned with the texture of the painted surfaces. Traditional Russian icon painting had represented the spiritual. For Malevich and his colleagues, painting itself became a spiritual act. In the Netherlands, yet another group of artists were experimenting with non-objective art. Based on the theoretical ideas of Theo van Doesburg and Piet Mondrian, this group took an approach that would become known as de stijl, or the style. Advocating the use of primary colors, black, white, and gray, and straight and vertical and horizontal lines only, they felt the reduction to these elements would help produce a universally understood abstraction through aesthetic balance. Mondrian was adamant about these parameters, and was so outraged when Van Doesburg suggested using diagonal lines in his work that he left the group. But this reduction to non-objective forms caused problems for viewers and art critics alike. How are we supposed to understand circles and squares on a canvas? How do we judge whether a painting is good, or if the artist has any skill? If this visual language was supposed to be universal, why was non-objective painting so confounding? Many of the artists we've looked at wrote about their theories and what they were trying to achieve. Some of these writings are straightforward and some complicated and difficult to understand. 
but some teachers in an art school called the Bauhaus came up with a set of principles with which they could talk about this new art. You may have heard about these in art class. These principles were called the principles of composition or the principles of design. If non-objective art was made up of only basic elements like line, shape, color, and texture, there must be some reason for how these elements are arranged. By using these principles, Artists could talk about the attributes of a certain visual arrangement. Is there a feeling of balance, of unity, of harmony? If there was an aesthetic harmony and balance in an artwork, was it because the artwork reflected the harmony and balance existent in the universe? If the artwork was incoherent and unbalanced, was it because it mirrored the chaos we also sometimes experience? By now, abstraction in any number of forms was accepted by artists and the art viewing public, if not the public at large. There had been two new artistic trends, surrealism and abstract expressionism, that developed concurrently or after the heyday of the non-objective art as we have seen so far. Surrealism used a hyper-real representation of objects to depict bizarre dream states. Abstract expressionism used spontaneous and painterly means to evoke spiritual or emotional states. These trends would dominate artistic styles in the West during the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. But in the late 1950s and early 60s, some artists began to tire of the emotional angst and drama of Expressionist art. To them, art was simply a visual experience. This trend in painting would take place primarily in the U.S., and two distinctive camps emerged. On the East Coast, artists explored how the shaping of the canvas would add to the visual experience. On the West Coast, a style would emerge that would become known as hard edge painting. These post-50s artists undoubtedly owed a debt to those artists who explored non-objective painting earlier in the century, and like them, they were serious in their approach to painting. However, the work of these artists was less theoretically stringent and explored shape and color in a more playful way. Their use of geometry was not limited to basic shapes. The paintings of Ad Reinhardt perhaps sum up what we've been talking about. Reinhardt came up with 12 rules of pure art. While the artists we have looked at earlier got rid of the object in their art, look at all the things that Reinhardt says you should get rid of. If you got rid of all these things in a painting, what would you have left? For Reinhardt, what would be left would only be the art. Let's think of art like a pizza. If you got rid of the pepperoni, the cheese, the sauce, and the crust, what would you have left? Most people would say you are left with nothing. Ad Reinhardt might say you are left with the idea of the perfect pizza, pure pizza if you will. Since there are always variables in the ingredients, the pure pizza exists only in your mind. Geometric abstraction is not the only style of non-objective art. Other styles that use abstract means to express perceptions not tied to the observed world can also be considered non-objective. Now that you know a bit about the development of non-objective painting, perhaps you will be able to see it in a new way. True, there is no story in a narrative, metaphorical, or symbolic sense, but that doesn't mean that the art doesn't have any meaning. Likewise, being able to represent objects in a naturalistic way is not the only way to gauge the skill of an artist. Knowing how an artist uses form in a creative and novel way to express themes that are more theoretical can help us expand our understanding of what art can be.